Hi, I'm Jamie Miller, a registered SQF consultant and food safety consultant at Kellerman Consulting, and you are watching our video series on environmental monitoring programs. As a quick review, environmental monitoring is intended to mainly monitor non-food contact surfaces near food contact areas that are cleaned out and sanitized regularly, and other areas of the facility that are not cleaned regularly to determine if bacteria are living and growing in these areas. Safety concerns for environmental monitoring are pathogens which cause illness or death if they are to contaminate materials in the facility. These organisms include all known strains of Salmonella, E. coli 0157H7 or O121, Listeria mon monocytogenes, and Staphylococcus aureus. Quality concerns are spoilage organisms and general levels of bacteria mold, and yeast that may negatively affect the taste, smell, or texture of food and food packaging. Facilities with very little water usage in the facility may choose to swab infrequently, and facilities with regular water usage and reason to suspect the presence of pathogens or other organisms are present in the facility should swab regularly throughout the year to monitor if these organisms may cause immediate risks to operations. As we continue to explore the fundamental principles of environmental monitoring, we are ready in this video to review the how-tos of swabbing. In this episode, we will look at where to get environmental swabs, where to use environmental swabs, how to swab, how often to swab, and what to do with the results. Swabs can generally be purchased from food testing laboratories or direct from swab producers. Food testing labs can be found online, and if you find one close to your facility, that would be best since the lab may offer a courier service, which can be a huge convenience. World Bioproducts is an example of a company that offers innovative products that can really make a difference when it comes to developing your environmental monitoring schedule. They offer a variety of polyurethane swabs, such as the Easy Reach sponge samplers, and the pure blue swab samplers, allowing you to match the swab to your location. When considering a food testing laboratory in the food and food packaging industry, it is important to be aware of a voluntary certification that laboratories often maintain, which demonstrates a high level of competence and effectiveness in testing, which is called ISO 17025. The ISO 17025 certification means an independent auditor has conducted a full audit of the laboratory against their testing practices to demonstrate that their results can be trusted. Especially with pathogen testing, this is very important since a false positive can have potentially damaging impacts on a food facility or food packaging operations. Most laboratories around the country maintain this certification but it is still important to ensure the laboratory carries this certification and that you can trust their results. Now let's look at the actual environmental swabs to determine which kind is best for conducting the swabbing. Swabs come in two main types, those with sticks attached to them and those without sticks. The swabs work the same way, so there is not a right or wrong swab from a testing standpoint, only an ease of use for the employees who will be performing the swabbing. The only differences between these types of swabs is how the swabs are handled. Those with a stick are held by those sticks during use. Swabs without sticks must be handled by a sterile gloved hand. One other important fact about sponges is that most sponge swabs are going to have one test run on it, so you may have to use more than one sponge on the same area. There are combination tests the laboratory can run on a single sponge, such as general bacteria testing or aerobic plate count or total plate count, yeast, and mold, and coliforms from a single sponge. Labs may also be able to run a general pathogen screen test for many pathogens off of one sponge, but that is still one test for one sponge. Please make sure to discuss this issue with the lab during preparation to conduct environmental swabbing. The World Bioproducts Easy Reach Sponge Samplers, as seen here, are available in a variety of sizes. 
or a double swab to swab one surface for multiple tests. They also offer extension rods with interchangeable adapters available, such as these options seen here. These prevent trained employees from having to climb on dangerous ladders and collect samples from hard to reach areas, such as reaching inside deep tanks, vats, or silos. Their pure blue swab samplers with a large tip, as seen here, allow you to sample anything from cracks and crevices up to one square foot. These swabs allow for a quantitative analysis and can be ordered with a variety of collection and buffer solutions. The pure blue swab samplers with the small tip make direct plating of samples simple as they are prepared specifically to deliver one milliliter of solution directly onto a plate or film, allowing for a quantitative analysis. These are great for facilities with internal labs. Laboratories and swab producers are very knowledgeable and will be able to assist you in determining the best swabs to purchase for your operation. With the laboratory or laboratories we want to use and the type of swabs we want to purchase identified, it's time to figure out where in the facility we are going to swab. When we think about where to swab, it is important that we talk about two issues. The first is deciding the swab locations, and the second is documenting those locations. Writing the locations down is just as important as the locations themselves. So let's look at what we are documenting as we talk about the locations. When we think about selecting locations to swab, we generally use the idea of zones. Generally, each food facility will be broken down into four distinct zones, subsequently moving further and further away from direct food contact surfaces. The easiest and simplest way to document swabbing is to make a list of the areas intended for swabbing. You may choose to include a zone for each location if you like, but that is not required. For each location, designate an internal code such as A1 or swab1 or some other indicator that doesn't specifically mention the zone or actual location. The reason we need a code is because when we submit those swabs to the lab that will test them, we don't want the lab to know the swab location since this can influence the technician. One way to perform this is to create a numbered log of the actual swab locations for a specific period of time, such as a month or a year. From there, transcribe that number next to the lab swab number for the testing period. So if you test five swabs a week for four weeks straight, you will see swab numbers one through five the first week, six through 10 the second, and so on and so forth. This allows some secrecy in the swab locations. Zone one is usually a food contact surface or a location directly above or below a food contact surface where the presence of a pathogen, mold, yeast, spoilage organism, or allergen would be treated as a contamination of product event. As we mentioned earlier, we do not swab these sites unless directed to by a customer or regulator. Directly next to a food contact surface is a zone two area. This can be out, the outside of a container that has food inside, the legs of equipment, the floor or walls near where food is stored, or other spots very close to food, but not directly touching usually within 10 feet of food contact surfaces. A zone two area is usually the closest we get with swabbing for pathogens. And if we get a positive result in a zone two area, it is treated as an emergency since we have a hazard that is very close to the food or food packaging and contamination is very possible or even likely. 
Farther back from food contact surfaces are zone three. This would be greater than 10 feet, whether in the same room as the food contact surface or just beyond the entrance if equipment is close to that entrance. Zone four is any area far from exposed food or food packaging locations where staging, processing, or handling is performed. Warehousing areas, boiler rooms, decommissioned equipment storage areas, hallways, break rooms, and areas not in use during slowdown and operations are examples of areas which likely fall within zone four. With purchased swabs, a location list, a frequency for the facility, a laboratory to send those swabs to, and a schedule of how often to swab, the foundation of environmental monitoring is in place. But this is only half the environmental monitoring program, as we will be covering swabbing patterns, special circumstances and facilities to consider, what to do with the results, and how to review the program after a series of swabbing events have been conducted. In our next episode, we are going to look at the special case of drains in the facility and how to determine if swabbing inside and around drains makes sense in your program. Thank you for watching. For more food safety training videos and resources, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or follow us on LinkedIn.